What is going on to all my Netflix Kevin Hart fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix series review and today we're breaking down the new limited drama series by the name of True Story. A series in which by the time this video is out will be available to stream on Netflix today. Your boy got a chance to check it out early and I'm really excited to let you all know what I thought about it and let you know if it's worth checking out in this breakdown review. Before we dive into it, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well welcome to the community. Consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content if you enjoyed this breakdown review well make sure to like and share the review it helps out the channel a lot but I also appreciate the support and in the comments let me know if you were excited for true story but more importantly once you've seen all seven episodes what did you think about it? Let's talk about all your pros, your cons, your thoughts on the direction, the story, the performances, the twists, the turns. Were you entertained or were you disappointed? And since we're talking Kevin Hart, what is your favorite Kevin Hart performance? Let me know in the comments below. So let me just kick this thing off, starting off with my positives. I'm going to just say it right now. This might be the most surprised I've been for a series. By the, by the time I got done with the series, this surprised the hell out of me in the best way possible. We're gonna get into that here in a little bit, but for you all that aren't too familiar with this true story, drama, limited series starring Kevin Hart and Wesley Snipes, basically synopsis goes is, it's pretty much Kevin Hart just playing a different character, but having like a similar lifestyle to his real life success. He is a comedian that goes by the name of The Kid. He's had a very successful career. He just came out with a new movie called Antiverse, which by the way, there's a lot of cameos in this show, and there's a particular co-star in his movie Antiverse that I'll just say he's in the MCU and I'll leave it to that. But he has a big hit movie. He's going on a tour, headed back home to Philadelphia. Again, very loosely kind of based on Kevin Hart's true life because he is from Philly. He's going to Philly to do this tour, but he's also going to be paying a visit to his brother who is played by Wesley Snipes. And they, you can tell that there's a, a fractured relationship. They haven't spoken in some years. So we see Wesley Snipes, who plays his brother Carlton, invites his younger successful brother out for a night for drinks. They take some girls home, and unfortunately, one of the girls that Kevin Hart, or to say the kid, takes into his room. He wakes up. She winds up dead, and that's the series. We're watching to see how is the kid going to get out of this situation. So that's basically a synopsis, and i got to say right now, I was hooked. <laughs> I was hooked on this series. It's seven episodes. The first episode is about an hour, but every other episode from there on is about 30, 35 minutes, and, and it had the, this is the quintessential Netflix type of series because it had one of those every episode episode had a cliffhanger especially episode one that made you want to come back and I was literally I was in a situation where I was watching this show I'm like, all right all right let me go ahead let me it's, it's winding down let me go ahead and just watch this last episode and I'll watch the rest tomorrow but then they have a cliffhanger I'm like god damn I gotta watch the next one I was really engaged in the story it was very compelling a lot of mysterious aspects there's a lot of twists and turns that some of them I saw coming but some of the major ones I did not expect especially especially episode one the way they end that, I'm like, is this a goddamn dream? Is this really happening? Listen, it's that type of series. But let me just kind of get more into the details in regards to what really stood out to me before we get into all the nitty gritty. I want to start off with the performances. Me personally, I know Kevin Hart doesn't work for everyone. He's like the the Ryan Reynolds uh, in comedy for some people in regards to like seeing him in movies doing the same type of character. But putting that aside, I like Kevin Hart. I'm going to say it right now. I have no fear in saying that. I like Kevin Hart, regardless of like his outside, the comedian stuff, you know, the scandals and some of the stuff he said in the past. As far as like entertainment goes, I'm entertained by Kevin Hart. I've been following his career since Soul Plane. And listen, I'm going to say it right now. One of the best deleted scenes of all time clapping both of y'all when I get back. If you know what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments. But I, I find him to be very funny. I've seen him in person. Very funny guy. And his career, listen, I respect Kevin Hart from the hustle standpoint. The man's always working. But even putting my fandom aside for Kevin Hart, this is easily his best performance I've ever seen. That's, that's speaking highly because we got a really good performance this year by him. Early this year in Fatherhood, a couple years ago, he was in The Upside, I think was the name of it, with Brian Cranston. And throughout his career, he's had some you know smaller roles and some serious dramas that I've liked. But this here, ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Hart showed the best, and this was mostly a drama. This has some comedic beats. Of course, it's Kevin Hart. It's going to be funny, right? But it's not like a laugh out loud. Comedy isn't its main objective in the series. It's more about the drama. Seeing Kevin Hart playing the kid who, again, very Kevin Hart-like story, a very successful comedian, a movie star, a, a mobile entrepreneur, but then he sees the world and how the world sees him, and particularly the close ones to him, right? Especially his brother Carlton and Wesley Snipes, and seeing him take it on that burden of being a big movie star, it wouldn't mean to support other people, but then also throwing in the mix, 
This man has a dead girl in his room, and what can that mean for his career? And just seeing Kevin Hart navigate this narrative in regards to, okay, I got to worry about this death, but at the same time, I got this tour, I got a son, I got a wife that I recently divorced, I got people to take care of, and I got my brother relationship I got to fix. So there's a lot of stuff that the kid had on his plate. And I think Kevin Hart played it off perfectly, man. Yes, there's some nuances, some things that didn't really work for me entirely in his performance. But from for the most part, for me, this was Kevin Hart at his absolute best. And this kind of shows you that the man, if he takes his time, if he has the right scripts, the right directors behind him, has a great co-star in a Wesley Snipes, he can give you this type of performance. So I definitely want to applaud the man, Kevin Hart. But I also want to shine some light on one of my favorite actors in regards to just growing up watching Wesley Snipes' film. Of course, you know, I'm talking about Blade, but other films that he's been in, his TV shows. And again, seeing this kind of revamp of his career has been something great to see. Wesley Snipes is ready for Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Bring him back to Hollywood because him as Carlton, again, he is the older brother of the kid. And he is one of those brothers that... He's always been in the shadow. He had a very kind of interesting career very early on in high school into college being like the sports athlete. Unfortunately, things didn't work out for him because he got kind of caught up in drugs and money and stuff like that. And he's kind of kept that wrap throughout his adulthood. So seeing Wesley Snipes as the big little brother in a sense was just such a great back and forth. I truly believe that they were brothers in the show, not just because they are dark skinned and they look like they could be brothers, but the chemistry was there. The, 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 the rivalry between the two brothers, the jealousy that unfolds in the story kind of shines out and I thought Wesley Snipes did a really great job and again Dolomite was my name I wasn't a fan of Cutthroat City but he was great in that and then this is another example that again Hollywood I'm, I'm talking to you Kevin Feige Nate Moore Marvel MCU I know we got Mahershala Ali which I'm excited to see his him as Blade Delroy Lindo just got announced to be in the film but you gotta make my man Wesley Snipes just give him a cameo that's all I want but neither here nor there Wesley Snipes Kevin Hart was great and honestly all of the performances throughout the, well, there's a couple characters that I didn't really care for, but for the most part, I thought everyone, whether it was Herschel, his uh, bodyguard, Billy, his uh, friend that wrote uh, some of his jokes, Todd, his manager, I thought that everyone, the Samba cast, did a really good job of playing their roles. So uh, going a little bit into the story without giving too much away, because there are a lot of twists and turns, I think at the heart of the story, it does show this story of, again, whether you know, you're know you a big time actor like Kevin Hart or a fan of the actor like Kevin Hart it, and then a family member or a friend of his it kind of shows you all these different elements of how Hollywood and money and fame and greed can get the better of people especially when you have those close to you and how the ones closest to you can hurt you the most so I kind of love the story of fame and fortune and what it can do to a person I love the jealousy aspect that the story has to it there's a lot of drama again family drama between the two brothers there's a crime element in regards to again getting rid of the body and having other other people get involved and what that can mean for money issues and money laundry and extortion so there's a lot of stuff I didn't expect from the series but knowing that the show writer behind it is work who works on Narcos that doesn't surprise me also the director who directed half of the episodes directed shows like Lost and Watchmen I'm like okay that makes more sense because they've dove in those different genres and they brought a lot of those sensibilities to the show so from a narrative perspective pretty impressed but hey this wasn't a perfect series I'm gonna say it right now there were some moments that I had to kind of be like okay I gotta kind of suspend my disbelief because there were a lot of I don't want to say plot holes but there were a lot of plot conveniences and, and listen there's always plot conveniences for narratives like this when you're trying to get away with murder when you're trying to get rid of a body of course there's going to be the occasional oh the camera wasn't working during this time or the biggest celebrity on the world is able to walk the streets of Philly without being seen so there are moments where you just kind of be like okay and, and the show does acknowledge some of its plot conveniences, but for the most part, there were a lot of times I'm just like, okay, they would have questioned this person a lot more. The police would have been more involved than what they really were. And I want to give too much away, but there were some, the occasional plot conveniences when I just had to be like, you could have figured out a better way to implement the story a little bit better. But another thing that I have to bring up as far as criticisms, again, I thought the cast and the, the actors did a great job, but there were some characters I really thought didn't do much to the story I think of the Billy character who writes jokes for Kevin Hart and I honestly think that that character was written in by Kevin Hart because again there's a lot of like real life kind of probably characters in this show that Kevin Hart probably can relate to in real life like obviously his relationship with his brother in real life with Wesley Snipes his trainer that I know he's really close with can be looked at as the security guard but the Billy character who writes the jokes 
they give her a little subplot in regards to her venturing out on her own and being her own comedian because, you know, the kid isn't really looking at her jokes as, as often as he should. But that plot went actually like literally nowhere. And it really had she really didn't have much to do in the show, especially once we get past a certain point, the halfway point in the show. So I thought her character was kind of done uh, underwhelming and really wasn't necessarily like needed for the show, as well as there are these and, and just from a stereotypical characters that you can expect in a show like this I thought the Greek brothers and when you see the show you'll know what I'm talking about they were just kind of lackadaisical for me it's like these two like you know gangsters or like a two-man operation you're telling me they're like these big bad villains and, and you'll see how they're integral in the show but I thought that those characters good actors were just too on the nose for me very stereotypical very one-dimensional and I thought they were just kind of you know some characters that I thought were very underwhelming but outside of those things I will say Episode one and two are very engaging, very juicy, very make you want to come back for more. But as the show kind of went on, I'm, I'm thinking of episodes kind of four and five. They're not filler episodes by any means, but there are some filler moments. Again, focusing on Billy, which didn't go anywhere. Focusing on a relationship she has with someone that didn't go anywhere. Some other twists and turns that really didn't add up to anything. There were moments in the middle pack of the show that I felt like the show could have maybe either slim some of that down and condense it just to one episode instead of for two and really make it maybe even a five or six episode miniseries. So there are moments in that kind of second half that I thought were a little bit pacing issues and just some stories that didn't really go anywhere. But outside of those things, before I give you all my overall thoughts, before you leave, make sure if you haven't already to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Overall, true story surprised the hell out of me, not only from a performance standpoint by this being the best performance by Kevin Hart, seeing Wesley Snipes doing his thing as the, the brother was great. There are so many twists and turns that I did not see coming, which kept me engaged. This is a quintessential binge watching type of show that I recommend. 30 minutes, easy binge, and I recommend you all give it a watch. Yes, it has some of its flaws that I mentioned. Some characters don't, don't really go anywhere, but again, I urge you all to give this show a chance. Just watch the first episode, and if you're not hooked by the first episode, then hey, you can let me know in the comments, but I was thoroughly entertained, and I recommend you all give True Story a chance, and when you do, let me know what you thought of it, your pros, your cons, did you see the twist coming, let's talk about it, and again, Kevin Hart's performance, am I the only one thinking that this is his best performance that he's ever done, let's talk about that in the comments below, if you all stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate you, before you leave again, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you don't miss any of my future reviews, as you all can see on the screen now before you leave, hope you're staying safe, hope you have a great holidays, make sure to subscribe to my channel, check out my other content, and we'll catch you in the next video.